When did we invent cinema? We have evidence of man experimenting with moving images from a time when we still lived in caves. Pictures of animals painted on cave walls seem to dance and move in the flickering firelight. And while this certainly can't be called cinema, it is proof that moving images fascinated even early man. In 1876, a photographer called Edward Mybridge was studying the movement of horses. He rigged 12 cameras to trip wires, which triggered as the horse ran past. And although it wasn't true film, something strange happened when the photographs were shown in sequence. When sped up, the horse came to life. Twelve years later, an engineer named Louis Le Prince invented the Louis Le Prince Single Lens Combination Camera Projector Type 1 Mark II, the first single lens movie camera. And on October 14, 1888, Le Prince shot these 20 frames. The Round Hay Garden Scene, the earliest surviving film. Le Prince went on to shoot two more films, Traffic Crossing Leeds Bridge and The Accordion Player. The next big leap in cinema technology came in 1891 with the invention of the kinetoscope, a single viewer peep show exhibition which could show looped footage on 35mm film, and what followed was a decade of innovation. In 1893, the blacksmith scene, the first kinetoscope film to be publicly displayed, was also the first to use actors in a role. In 1894, we got the world's first cat video. In 1895, the Lumiere brothers became the first people to project a motion picture with their newly invented cinematograph camera with projector lens. And this changed everything. Cinema finally had an audience. That same year, the Annabelle Serpentine Dance was the first film shown in colour, an effect achieved by hand-painting individual frames. It's also the year that gave us our first special effect. By pausing the camera and switching the actor out for a dummy, Alfred Clarke produced the decapitation for his film, The Execution of Mary, Queen of Scots. In 1896, we saw the first film directed by a woman, Alice Guy, in what was probably the first fictional narrative film, The Cabbage Patch Fairy, Meanwhile, director William Hersey caused a scandal with The Kiss, the first film to show two people locking lips. The first decade and a half of film was filled with inventors looking to push the boundaries of a new art form. And perhaps no one did that more than former stage magician George Millier, who pioneered visual effects with his production company Star Films. He's responsible for the first horror film, The Devil's Castle, in 1886, And perhaps his most famous film, A Voyage to the Moon, is one of the earliest examples of science fiction, and still today is one of the most enduring images in cinema history. Through trial and error, these early filmmakers broke boundaries to best tell their story. From the first film edit in Robert Paul's 1898 Come Along Do, the first close-up, experiments with lighting and colour, wipes and transitions, what the filmmakers didn't know at the time is that they were creating a language a film grammar that's still used by filmmakers today. All this experimentation and pushing boundaries came to a head in the 1903 film The Great Train Robbery, which set a new standard for motion pictures when it became one of the film's first hits. The film built on 15 years of innovation, combining the best of what came before it, as well as mixing in new techniques of its own. It was one of the first films to tell a story in a sequence, with 10 different locations, new and innovative techniques like cross-cutting, cutting from one scene to another and then back again, special effects like rear screen projection and the first pan in movie history. It also contained the first instance of a villain shooting at someone's feet to make them dance, but what terrified audiences was its final shot, in which the villain pointed his revolver at the audience and pulled the trigger. The massive success of The Great Train Robbery proved the viability of film as a medium that could do more than just tricks and illusions. Film could tell stories. Three years later, the world's first feature-length film was released, The Story of the Kelly Gang, and although only fragments remain today, the film was immensely popular, earning back its £1,000 budget in its first week. In the early 1900s, almost all motion picture patents were owned by Thomas Edison's Motion Picture Patent Company, which attempted to exercise almost complete control over the industry. Filmmakers looking for artistic freedom and to escape the Edison patents moved west to Hollywood. And in 1910, W.D. Griffith directed the first Hollywood film, In Old California. 
But it wouldn't be until four years later that Hollywood would produce its first feature film, The Squaw Man, directed by Cecil B. DeMille. The film built upon the medium as a storytelling device, adding new depths to story and drama. The film was a hit, earning a net profit of $244,700, an amount unheard of in 1914. Over the next hundred years, movies would evolve from its humble beginnings to become what we know and love today. Stay tuned to this channel as we travel through the history of cinema, taking a look at the films that changed the art form forever, to see how we got from here to here.